a Tuscan scene downloaded. I got this picture on pixabay.com, uh, which uh, I kind of recommend as a source for photographs. They're the licenses that you can use them for uh, whatever you like, as long as you don't sell them on, I suppose that's it. Uh, a lot of uh, amateur uh, photographers. Very good, you know, and uh, a good source of, uh, of material. Uh, first of all, the, the, the palette. Here we go, titanium white, as usual. I like titanium white because it's a very um, strong, highly covering um, paint. I'm starting to run out because it starts to get hard to squeeze the tube. Make sure I've got plenty of it. Titanium white is, is my preference because you can always make it weaker, but you can't make a weaker paint stronger. You know, like zinc white, for example, or mixing white's even worse. I like a bit of uh, you know, strength in the in the colour, and opacity. I'm getting through a lot of paint these days. Get some decent amount of paint out there. Permanent rose. Cobalt blue. So those are my colours there. So I'll just push that up a wee bit there. And you can see my, that's my uh, little jar of solvent. Mm. Cup of tea. So let's go to the canvas. Yes, there we go. The usual thing, I'm going to do a wash. Remember the other weeks I was using a, um, a canvas, or linen in fact. This one's a, a canvas uh, a one, which is white, so I'm gonna have to put a, a, a wash on it. This one looks to be, uh, it's about 14 inches by, by 12 inches. I thought it kind of would suit the uh, suit the shape that I'm uh, going to paint. Yeah, there we go. That will do. I'll tamp it down because I don't want it to be sopping wet uh, while I'm painting. Even though what I'm using actually is. Uh, the oils are uh, well, the Griffin alkyds. They've got an alkyd kind of medium dryer sort of in them. So by the end of the painting, you, you feel that it's starting to, to set. I'm going to start off with the drawing, as usual. Now, the, what I don't like, I don't like that cypress tree stuck out there on the edge. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm, I reckon I'll put it around about here just so it's not, it's not too far into the painting uh, and it's, uh, it's not too close to the edge. It looks uncomfortable to me. It looks uh, um, as if it's kind of like, not an afterthought, but it's just sort of banged up against the edge of the composition, okay? And there's always room for a certain amount of fantasy in a painting. I think you're, you're better off with it. So I'm uh, just drawing, uh, kind of representation of the hills. I'm not going to go, my, my canvas isn't quite uh, long enough to get everything in, so I'm just going to uh, go to about there, I think. And I'm going to have my path slightly more path-like. It's kind of not really a path in, in, the, in the photograph. What it is is a kind of a division between two fields. There's a fence in it which I don't want, okay? So I'm gonna give myself the uh, opportunity of not having it the way it actually is. And then that can go around down there like that. And then my tree, I'm gonna have it there. I'm not gonna make it quite as big as it actually is because I want the scene to be bigger than, I don't want the tree absolutely dominating tree. So that will be my, yes, 
that will be my composition there. And remember, you're, you're supposed to be painting this, or I'm supposed to be painting this, as if I'm there. It's not, uh, uh, I don't want to start sort of slavishly imitating the photograph. It's not my intention. So there, and then there's a kind of, almost as if the, to me, it, it, it's as if the, the hill has subsided, but it's probably trees. All right, so let's have that towards us. It's nice to have a path in the landscape anyway. So I've got my hills there. Okay, so I'm going to put in some darks first. So I'm going to get some um, burnt sienna and blue. Just to, to put in, in the darks, because they're like the bones of the, of the painting to me. And everything else kind of hangs on these bones. There, like that. And then there's a dark up there, isn't there? Uh, dark over here, which runs up there, just so you don't forget where everything is. Might actually just bring that down a wee bit, and bring my tree down. Okay, that's dark, obviously. Okay, we've got stuff there, good. Around there, there's a bit of dark in there. Another division of fields there. I've only ever been to Tuscany once, but it was absolutely gorgeous. All those hill, hilltop towns. You can almost imagine the Romans and the Etruscans slogging it out in the hills. Now, not to fantasize when I'm painting. So uh, I'm going to do, I think I'll do that sort of, uh, they're wheat fields obviously. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna make those first, some yellow, some red, uh, and a bit of blue. And I always say that you should have a plan when you start your painting, how you're going to paint it, you know. And if you're, if you're doing on plein air painting and you're, you've got your, all your stuff with you, as you're sort of hoiking it all over to the place where you're going to paint, uh, it, it's around about then that you should be saying to yourself, what am I going to do? How am I going to approach this painting? Uh, almost that rather than arriving at the scene and then uh, thinking over how you're going to uh, approach it. So in other words, you're, you're making the painting, you're just looking for um, a kind of a way to, something to hang your painting on, if you, if, if you, if you get, maybe I'm not sort of expressing that uh, very well, but uh, you know, you've got your style and you're going to make the, the scene conform to your style rather than it making you conform to it. I think you get uh, more successful paintings that way. So I, I'm just going to block in like this, okay? Because my plan is to have a very dabby painting. That there, like that. Uh, and also that path. There. So that can go in there like that. Now you're standing out in Tuscany It's, it's, it's 11 o'clock in the morning because you didn't get out uh, of bed in time, get ready in time. You've hoiked all your stuff up here and it's getting hotter and hotter as the, as the day progresses and the sun's climbing further into the sky and uh, you forgot your water. You've got to make this painting uh, quick. Okay, so it's, uh, it's a good way of... You've got to emulate this, uh, this thing of uh, not... Uh, uh, slavishly following the, the photograph. Right, so here's the... Um, so I'm 
basically blocking in this with, uh, with dabs. But I'm not doing a complete, uh, a complete cover because I want some of the, the wash to show through. I put some red in that green because I don't want it to be uh, too toxic a green. Okay. Okay, so we've got that. That's that's okay. That's nearly done there. There's some green in here. Just gonna make sure that I register it. and some green in there, going up there, and some green in that tree. I'm going to go to the sky now. Um, now, so uh, I'm going to start out with the sky blue. So white and blue. Probably a bit darker than I, uh, I want to want it to end up being. Okay. Make sure I have enough because this is about twice as big as the the demonstrations I was painting all week. And so let's do this. I, I find this um, quite a, a contemplative way of painting. Once you get past the, the drawing and the initial stages, um, which are always a bit stressful, you know, we were saying uh, about it in, in the class that um, you're painting, you know, people sort of come up to you and say, oh, that must be so relaxing to, to, oh, to paint. And uh, it's bloody hard work, really. I mean, it's... I mean, I don't know, it's a first world problem, isn't it? But uh, there is work involved. You do get tired and you, you do go wrong. So it's not, uh, it's, not the, uh, it's not the lovely sort of gen gentle sort of thing that you might, people might think it is at the beginning. But once you've established where you're going and you're satisfied with the approach that you're taking, it does become uh, like a, a a meditation, really. It's just sort of uh, determining when to stop. But your bladder might tell you when to stop anyway, or your hunger, your your stomach, if you have a talking bladder. Okay, so I'm going to bounce all, all over this painting now. Okay, bounce around. And I think where I will bounce first is back into that green. So let's get some green. So it's going to be a lighter uh, green now. So I'm mixing up some blue, yellow, and, and a bit of uh, permanent rose, you know, the red. Okay, make sure I've got enough. I hope I don't run out because actually one color I think I'm, I'm nearly out of. So here we go, back into the green. So I'm going to fill in those interstitial spaces there, but not completely. So let's take, fill that area. I do paint quite fast, I, I think, but which is just as well, otherwise you'd be here all night, but uh, 
other people would sort of spend sort of time just painting slowly and everything, but I don't think you can do that in a, a live stream anyway. It's just as well that I'm quite swift. So there I've got some more green in there. I'm going to bounce up to the, uh, the wheat fields and put some more yellow into the that mix that I made, that orangey, kind of almost ochre kind of colour that I've got there. And I need more, more yellow and a touch of white. And then dabs in there. One of my students did a really wonderful fantasy-like uh, painting of this. You know, she, she's um, really finding her own style and uh, she messed with the colours. Uh, it, it was glorious actually to, to see it. Dabs around there. Okay, and up here as well, into that hill. There's not much in the way of um, atmospheric perspective in this one. The hill's quite close, I think. You can always got to do something with that afterwards. But, uh, yeah, that's fine. And in here as well. Okay, to the sky. Into the sky. So I'm going to lighten up the the horizon line. So blue and white. And I'm going to put a bit of yellow into it. Because the sky generally lightens towards the the skyline. Once again, sort of do little interstitial jabs, dabs, I should say. I'm not Mike Tyson. Okay. Mostly at the at the horizon, but also above as well, uh, fewer, fewer of them up above, that's the way I always do it there. Okay. I, I, I always consider this kind of I think once you once you get the once you get the the procedure down you know with the you know the beginning you know, when I'm teaching my uh, students um, I consider this like the, the next step so it's kind of I think this goes it could be sort of termed as uh, intermediate um, level I'm not quite sure but uh, You know, once you've done all the, the solid blocking and, and uh, working with solid colours and you start working with broken colour, I think it uh, it's a step. It's a step towards abstraction, actually. OK, so uh, we've got done something with the sky. Let's do a little bit, sorry, I forgot, with the tree. So I'm going to put in some green around there. Um, for me, the light is coming from um, slightly in front of us and off to the right. That's where I'm. Uh, that's where I'm going to sort of put it anyway. So back to the grass again, building it forward. More yellow. Bit of red.
shape that path a little bit. That path's got to come up there. I'll have to do something about that lip I've got here. I've got this wooden part here. Comes out too far. It's hard to get in at the at the canvas. Yeah. So building that forward. Okay. Now I want to put in some. Uh, darks but blue darks if you see what I mean so uh, in the shadows I want them to be blue so we're starting to depart from uh, uh, from reality so blue with a bit of uh, permanent rose this is kind of purpley color and I can put that in I'm almost at the point where I'm going to change my brush to a smaller one because the dabs will get smaller and smaller. So I'm putting in blues in there and along here and in that tree. In the darker parts of that tree. And also down along here to define that path. And towards the front, the foreground of these of this area here. And this is all without the aid of um, a multitude of paints on your palette. And I can imagine that uh, people who own art shops are probably sort of get get annoyed when I, when I see it, but uh, because there's there's a whole host of colours you can use. But I think as you go sort of uh, go on, you'd start choosing your own colours and. Uh, to start getting away from reality anyway. That's the, the value of this kind of stuff. Right. Um, I think I might change my brush to a small one. That's a number, that's a number one. I would have liked a number two, but I can't. <laughs> No laughing, but uh, I don't have one to hand. So up there and then in there too. That's all random. Yeah, that can be. And across up there, right back into the um, into the hillside. So blue, possibly a bit of burnt sienna, a bit of yellow, a bit of red. So I just want a dark. A dark warm yellow, I suppose, around here. Here. There's undulations and depressions in the in that hillside there. Also around here. Up 
there. Back into that um, that wheat field. And now I'm going to go quite bright. I said I was going to go quite bright, didn't I? You say you're going to go quite bright, go quite bright. And in here as well. path running down that by that copse of trees okay and then back into the green lighten that up and go come forward with a bit of uh, yellow different kind of green now. Okay. Small dabs. I find it's from now that it gets, uh, the contemplative part comes in. Once you've sort of set off on your course, it's like any journey, isn't it? The, once you set off, you're all right, but it's always sort of thinking about the journey and getting ready for it that occupies you and stresses you. Okay, got that there. Okay, uh, or oh, we should do the other part, which is a bit of a bit made up, really. Okay, and in here we we can also put some dabs of the green because it's there. It's a rustic path, isn't it? It's 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 a path between fields. It's not a it's not a major road. It's all sort of got vegetation growing in it, old straw. Now let's put in some uh, a redder strokes there, going across there. So the path looks as if it's not very often trodden. Now. I'm going to grab some of that red. I'm also going to put that in the green here. Not everywhere, but just in sort of little random places. Because I always put a red in the green anyway, because it makes it more natural. And I'm inviting the viewer to mix the thing optically anyway. So. Lest I forget, down here too. Right, some pinks in the sky. So white plus permanent rose will give me a, a cool pink. Okay, so I'm going to start out with uh, with that, and I'm going to put that in the sky. And those clouds, um, it's not necessarily so that you put them in, because I think if you were there, those clouds would be fleeting. They would be uh, moving. And to have those static uh, clouds that you can just spend time on, it's not like that in life, is it? So you just make the sky the way you want it to make. 
to want it to be if it fits into your plan so my aim is is to sort of go for that sort of shimmering sky that uh, if you if you're staring at something for a long time you know like you would be if you were out painting in the, a field in a hot country things do start to sort of uh, they do start to shimmer it starts to get a bit hard to 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 see normally okay got some of that and now i'm going to make a warmer pink so the white and uh, permanent rose plus a bit of yellow this time okay It. So I'm cutting down those little sort of areas where where it's not painted, where uh, how would you say where the where the wash is is showing through. Okay, and I'm going to go back to the blue, actually. I'm going to get some blue and white. Hmm. Multicoloured skies. I like that. I'm going to add in a touch of yellow to make it slightly greenish. Just slightly. See what that does. Towards the upper part of the, of the sky. Because you're moving forward so, um, I suppose, cautiously in, uh, in a painting like this, because you're only adding little bits at a time, you could put a couple of dabs down and then say, oh, no, 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 that's not for me. And change tack. This is the basis of four color printing, optical mixing. Okay, now I want to put in a few sort of bits and pieces around the, the painting. So I'm going to use the, the, the purpley blue for some distant trees up there around this, especially around here there's lo lots more sort of activity going on around here and down here as well so and get some green tie that in now let's get some red pure burnt uh, oh sorry um, yellow cadmium yellow and uh, permanent rose I'm going to put it in that tree because that's a, it's a, it's quite cold. Just amplify that that cold side of the tree there, and grab that again, and because it's it's the painting that's the important thing, not the fidelity.
it's a sort of like a dotty sort of uh, delineation going along here. a bit clearer. Now, I need to do something in here as well, because there's some... Uh, some kind of... I always call it activity, I'm quite sure how to actually sort of express it, but uh, there's things to be described. Make sure there's... Down there. Not exactly sure what it is that's going on there, just... It's a lot of, uh, a lot of trees. To the sky again. Let's see what I can do at the horizon level. I think I'm going to go back to uh, blue. Yeah. I want to cut down those little um, areas of pure wash. Think back into the green again. I'm going to load up much more yellow into this one. This even more. to the edge of the that was my first uh, encounter with the with the camera I bashed against the camera just then except this time with my own glasses <laughs> there's probably a, a way of throwing money at that problem to uh, to solve it, but uh, that'll have to be for another, another time. I'm a friend of mine has lent me an old Mac, which I'm going to set up and see if that works any better. Once, if that gets going, because the Mac is sort of um, more modern than the PC that I'm using at the moment, um, I'll be able to do some more stuff. You know, interview people and everything, because I can't do it at the moment because it's. Uh, 
the computer won't handle uh, first of all it won't handle sh me showing web browsers as I'm recording so but the Mac I think will here's hoping anyway it'll probably be a bit more reliable as well I'm currently leaning over to my left away from the cameras and here I'm, I'm deciding sort of at what stage will I will I sort of leave off putting in details what I would like to do is get an orange into that um, into that green so yellow lots of yellow and a a bit of red. My intention is for everything to be multicolored. So the painting is more coherent, I suppose. I'm almost not looking at the reference anymore now because uh, I've decided what I'm doing with this. I like putting in those reds. Every painting should have a bit of red in it anyway, but... Uh... Let's put some in here. And of course, once your painting is done, never explain it anymore. Why did you put those reds in? Why do you think? And leave it at that. I need to put some red in there, and I need some more sort of mishmash because I don't know what to call it in the pathway. see what I can do in here to shape those bushes a little bit and these two get in a bit of a, a brighter yellow in there not over describing because all I'm really doing is just saying to people uh, there's hills and the uh, Hills in a lonely tree. I'm going to make a purple. I like purple. Actually, that's a good, um, good thing to think when you're painting. What do I like? I like purple. Do something with purple in it. Where can I put purple? Can I put it in here? I can. For more multicoloredness. I think you've got to think, you know, would I like to see this painting in a in a frame hanging in a museum? Bloody right. In fact, last year I went to um, Birmingham 
And it was great. Really enjoyed Birmingham. But there was a, an art gallery in there. On my very last stop, I, was, I had my bag packed. I was leaving the, the Airbnb. And the Airbnb was in this sort of um, modern complex, which had all shops. It was like a shopping mall underneath. And I was walking back through it, and there was this really good um, commercial gallery in, in there, which I couldn't remember what it was called. but. So I went round and I looked at all the art, which was a sale, like it's not a, a municipal kind of gallery. Um, and there was work by that English forger. What was his name? John Mile or something like that. Um, there was a, a whole bunch of, of works by, by him. You know, he, he used to copy Monet's and, uh, well, he probably still does. And he got banged up for it. He, he, so he was... <laughs> Put in prison. I think he was only in for a month or six months or something like that. But uh, the um, the detective who uh, put him away uh, ended up being his biggest customer. So he was just buying these um, like Monet type paintings, and he he ended up because he was doing it. Uh, you should read the story. Actually, he's very good. Uh, he was doing it to to get money to embezzle money out of people really initially because he was in such desperate. Uh, straits with he was a lone parent and you know and uh, I don't think he did anyone any actual harm but uh, he so he does them now and he calls them genuine genuine fakes and it's sort of written on the back of them it's really you know and they they're pretty good and uh, I f one of my customers living in Ireland an English fella he had one and so I, I visited his mansion, a <laughs> huge house in a, um, in a place called Killiney in Dublin. I think they've sold it now, but uh, he had this uh, huge house and they had one of these um, fake, genuine fake uh, Monets. He showed this to me. It was actually very good. It was a good painting. I'm not sure if it was a, a copy of a an actual painting, or it was just painted in the style of. But it, it did look like the, the the proper thing. Very interesting story. If you can get the book, get it. And I think there's some sort of uh, statistic. I mean, you'd have to go and check it for yourselves. But it was something outlandish, like 20% of the, uh, of paintings in in galleries are not genuine. You know, so much for experts. And I'm not suggesting you go away and tr do this yourselves. Because you're short of cash. <laughs> John Myatt, that's it, yes. I'm putting in some very, very light green into the sky now as well. So. It needs to be, there needs to be enough uh, dabs in it for you not to be able to just pick out sort of uh, individual ones and, and you know, it, it needs to be small enough so that you, uh, you do mix them optically, I think. Well, that's what I'm after anyway. And I think, I do like the, the way that it goes yellow towards the bottom down here. So I'm going to make it slightly more yellow. And you see, I'm not doing those clouds. I just don't want to do them, and I'm not doing them. And nobody can make me. Stop trying to make me do the clouds. <laughs> there we go. I told you it was contemplative. You're probably contemplating going to the loo. I think people read their own things into the into the dabs anyway. They're reading clouds into there, and they're, they're not even uh, intentional. And you let them get on with it.
never explain, never complain. Uh, oh, what was I doing that? Put it in the cinema. Put little dabs in there. And I would like some um, more vivid red in here too. Isn't there a guy who's supposed to have forged a Ferrari or something? You'll have to look that one up yourself. <laughs> Um, I think I'll do a little bit more with the uh, horizon line. I think I'll sort of talk to you a bit more. Yes, I must grab some of that purple and just do a bit more here. Yeah, I like that. I like the purple coming into that. I, wish, I should actually show this, shouldn't I? I don't, I'm not sure whether the colour will be any better. On the, I thought the colour was a bit odd today, but uh, no, maybe that's a bit sort of... And let's see if I can come forward and see, see if it will. I, I, I meant what I said about the, uh, the, you know, the meditative uh, part of, uh, of, of that kind of painting. And once you start putting on the, on the dabs, you just go into a kind of a reverie, if you're not talking on a live stream. But uh, you go into a reverie. And, and I've always said that you've got about four hours in a, in a if you if you can allow yourself four hours in a creative project you know like an hour is is your you're taking off and you're climbing and it's a it's an effort and uh you know you're getting everything in place and you're not sure whether it's right or anything but you you climb up you climb up to the uh the cruising altitude and you cruise there for you know t two hours maybe three hours and then you glide back down because you know your bladder is full or your you know, you're hungry, or, or you want a coffee, or you just run out of steam. And uh, what harm if you've got a small brush and you're just um, putting in little dabs everywhere?